going on guys and I'm back with another video as you can see I'm still wearing the same clothes for my weekly breakdown because I'm pumping out a lot of videos tonight it's all the same thing I just finished recording my weekly market video so that already came out Monday so if you're watching this make sure you go watch that if you haven't already and let's get back in this video so what we're going to be going over today is refining order blocks I've gone over this a little bit in previous videos in the past, but I just wanted to make another one to show you guys the importance of refining order blocks and how you can get crazy entries and crazy just trades overall. So we're going to move on to this, this chart right here because it's a little bit cleaner and it just has whole, my whole numbers marked out. This is where I, I have multiple different charts for different things. I have this is my main markup chart where I'm intraday trading and I change and I just mark it up every day. This is the chart that I have all my levels marked out. And this is my high time frame overall, what I'm looking at on monthly, weekly basis. So this is all marked up on the monthly, weekly, and daily. So as you can see, I'm still overall bearish on US 30 long term because of what we're looking at. But until we can get a break of structure, this isn't gonna matter. So this is just what we're looking at long term. But that's not where we're going over in this video. In this video, we're going to be going over how I refine order blocks and how they give me better entries. So if you don't know what an order block is, I have videos on that. So you want to watch that before anything. But uh, basically, when you're trading order blocks, there's two main areas that you want to pay attention to. You want to pay attention to the open of bearish order blocks. So meaning if it's the last up candle before a down move, you want to focus on the open of that candle. And then the second most important area is you want to look at the mean threshold. And by mean threshold is just another word of saying the 50% of that overall order block. And the way that I use these 50% of the order block, because knowing that it's the mean threshold, there's a high likelihood that price could likely have a wick into that area or even just trade into it before potentially having that overall rejection that you were looking for. But the way I use it is when I'm getting into trades, I'm more than likely getting trying to get into the trade at the open of a bearish order block candle. And my stop loss is going to be somewhere above the 50%. I'm not going to have my stop loss anywhere under it because I already know that there is a high likelihood price is more than likely going to come into it at some point wick or maybe just close above before potentially coming down. So always have your stop loss above that order block when you're trading order blocks. Trust me, don't try to get a crazy risk reward setup, especially on US 30 because it is very volatile and it will stop you to fuck out. Trust me, I only trade US 30 and I'm telling you from experience. So this is how I refine my order blocks. I have two things marked up, the open. So the open of this bullish candle and when it's a bearish candle, you're marking the open also. So in this case, right here. So you see this, the last down candle for this up move. You can see, look how price respects the open of this candle. Price comes and closes above, but look how price did have a wick to the mean threshold, as you can see right here. That's why I always have my stop somewhere under the 50% because there's a high likelihood price will travel into it in possibly the form of a wick. Because if you look on the higher time frames, you can see the one hour respected it, the four hour was respecting it. But if you come to the 30 minute, it was also respecting. But if you come lower to the 15 minute, damn it, it respected on all of the time frames. I was trying to see if it was going to be like it closed under for any of these, but you can see how clean that it was respecting this one level and as you can see this is a one hour order block also because this is the last down candle before this up move so there was high probability in this setup over here and this was an area that i was looking to target if you look right here this was an area that i was looking to target we had this four hour order block we had other confirmations but that's not important as of right now before price overall came into it having that push up and as you can see that is where price is as of right now. So you can see if you would have gotten to a trade at this order block and you would have had it at this 50%, you would have got stopped out, even though you were going to be correct on the overall push and direction of this trade. 
So to basically the way I refine it and the way it helps me, it gives me an area that I could define my stop loss. So in this case, you would probably would need it a 60 pip stop loss to even a 50 pip stop loss. It all depends. It all depends on your account size and all depends as your overall strategy as a trader. So I'm going to look for another scenario in the case where these order blocks were respected and in cases like this right here see this last down candle for this push that then broke these highs this is classified as a one hour bullish order block and as you can see what is the area that is mostly respected in this case since it's a bullish order block it would be the open of this candle as of right here and then an area that we would have been able to refine it to we would have pulled the 50 percent and in this case you can see price didn't come to it but you can see how well price came to this one hour order block came to the open of it and it just never came back from here price expanded over over 300 pips to the top side so if you would have been getting into a trade in this case right here all right i gotta take this off this should be fucking me up would have stopped somewhere below this 50 percent if you would have been able to hold this whole street that's a one to ten right there and this is in the span of one day let me just get the the real what it is so from here right here am i pressing the right button right here to here this is in the span of one day and four hours you would have been able to get a one to ten so meaning if you would have risked a thousand dollars on the trade you would have made ten if you would have risked a hundred dollars you would have made a thousand dollars in one day depending on the size of your account risking the smallest amount possible having a one to ten if you would have risked ten dollars no nah, not ten dollars this is us 30. so meaning if you would have got in here with a stop loss below meaning like 30 if you would have risked 30 dollars you would put could have potentially made 300 on this trade in total and even if you would have held for a one to two you would make sixty dollars with barely to no drawdown that's crazy so mind you this isn't the only example i'm going to show you i'm going to show you multiple examples because i'm showing you that this happens repetitively and there's a reason why i trade the way that i do okay so here's a good example in this case look to the left if you look at this candle right here this massive down candle before this up move this is still classified as an order block. Even though it is a major candle, it is still classified as an order block. So where would you mark up? You would mark up the open and we're on the hour time frame. So we're gonna mark this up as a one hour order block at the top. But then what are we gonna do? But like we do with everything else, we're going to refine it. And what do you see with this refined entry? You see, this is where price was consolidating it it starts to consolidate at the 50 percent of this order block and you can see price was trading above it before it had that expansion then if you look even on in even smaller right here this last down candle before this push up that broke the high that started to move look at where price retraced into price had this push retrace back into the high of this candle before pushing even higher so even here we refine it even more the 50 percent right here you see this last candle let me zoom in for you price had dropped pushed higher creating this one hour order block the next candle treated lower into this 50 percent of this order block but like i said it didn't close below it so it's still being respected and then you can see that with the next candles so if you would have been getting into a trade at the high of this order block with a stop loss somewhere below, I usually have a 50 pip stop loss. So in this case, uh, would I have been stopped out? I might have got saved by a pip, but in this case, spread probably would have stopped me out. But for the basis of this video, say you kept it below here because you saw that it was a 34 800 level. So you kept it there. Knowing that if you would have kept that there, targeting possibly this order block up here you would have been able to make a one to almost one to three trade almost 2.8 so if you would have risked a thousand dollars you would have potentially made back 2800 and the same thing if you would have risked ten dollars you would have potentially made back 28 dollars so but you can see the mean threshold 
and the 50% of these order blocks get respected very often. And you can see that this is all refined off of this major order block right here. But then inside of this, we refined it even more to looking at a smaller order block than 50% of that order block also. There's a lot of ways you're able to refine this. And this, uh, this is just a way of me showing you that there is a lot of things that you could do to get into trades. And this is just using two confirmations, just the fib, not even the fib. This is just using the order block. But when you tie this order block with the fib, with understanding where price is likely to go on a day-to-day -day basis, understanding the daily bias, understanding where liquidity is, understanding the whole numbers, understanding where banks like to maneuver price, you start to get high likelihood and high probability setups that are likely to be respected. So another example that I'm going to show you guys before I end this video is right here. Look at this, this last down candle before this up move that started this whole thing. We're going to pull it all the way over. Matter of fact, it didn't even get respected. I mean, I thought this was going to respect it, but in this case, it didn't. So just like this, if you would have been waiting for price to come into it. It wouldn't have got respected and you wouldn't have took that trade. But if you move it even over more, you can see that price did respect it. So like we do with all our order blocks, we refine it to 50%. So if you just trade order blocks, you can make money off it. It's not going to be, uh, you're not going to make, uh, have as many winning trades due to the fact that it's only one confirmation and one confirmation isn't enough a lot of the time. But if you would have took, taken this trade based on this order block, then possibly another confirmation would have been this FIB. So we're drawing it from this low to this high of where price retraced. We have this order block rejection. We have the 70.50 and the 62 on the FIB rejection. And the price never came back into it. And we we're also staying above the 50%, aka the mean threshold of this down candle before this push up. So this is another example that I'm showing you guys. So guys, I'm just telling you, these happen very often. Even if it happens one to two times a week, these one to two times is all you need. You don't need to have a lot of trades. The less trades you take, the more. The less, the better. I'm telling you guys, when you're in here taking five trades a day, you're just opening yourself to more risk. The more trades you take, the more you're opening risk. The more trades you're likely to lose if you take one trade you can only possibly lose one trade but if you take five trades you're opening the possibility of being able to lose all of those trades also so i'm actually going to show you guys one more example just so you guys just so you guys really see it right here i've trained my eyes to see these perfectly already all right didn't come back to it again damn see but just showing you guys it's not always going to be perfect you're going to lose trades using these simple concepts i'm not telling you guys like this is going to be perfect but as you can see matter of fact i'm going to show you another example right here where price traded into it multiple times so as you can see right here this last down candle this last up candle before this down move which would be classified as a four hour bearish order block we can mark up the 50 percent because we always do even though in this case that wasn't respected but as you can see, to the pip, this is how you know that these areas are high likely and high probability because from these areas, price never came back. Never. So if you, like I said, if you just traded these by itself with a stop above, somewhere above the 50% of this order block, this is a higher time frame trade, so you're going to have to have a higher time frame. But look at the potential that you could have caught with this move. If you would have been able to hold this whole thing, this is the potential. Oh, what the fuck? I don't know what I just did, but this is a potential one to 15. And then even if you would have held to a high probability area, such as this order block right here, why is it an order block? Because this is the last down candle before this push up that broke the highs. If you would have just held it to there because this is a high probability area where price is likely to go to this would have been a one to eight and then taken even further if you would have got out a little bit even earlier at this order block right here this last down candle before this up move or even right here this would have been a potential one to four so you see what i'm saying all based on a higher time frame four hour 
and then let's go even deeper let's look at it see if there was one on the daily time frame you can see there was one on the daily time frame over here so this daily order block right here in this case it wasn't respected as well as the other ones because it was a full hundred percent retracement but if you took it down to just one time frame lower you would have been able to look at this four hour order block and be able to possibly capitalize on a one to 15 move so if you would have risked a thousand dollars you would have made fifteen thousand on that one trade even though this is a longer trade this is a trade that took a total of i'm fucking up damn damn there we go this was a 21 day move so if you would have been able to hold for 20 days you would have been able to make a 1 to 15 and that's 15 percent 15 percent a month is more than any bank is doing by itself so basically i'm gonna summarize this video before we close it out because i showed you guys examples of how i personally refine my order blocks and how i would use them to get into trees so in simplest terms the way that i refine my order blocks in this case this is a just a basic example of how i would look to see price of retrace into an order block before i catch my entry the way that you refine it is just and simply finding the 50 percent or the halfway point and the way you do that is by using the Fibonacci. And by doing this, you're able to mitigate risk. So you're able to have a smaller, tighter stop loss so that, so that you could expand your risk to reward options. So meaning if you're able to lower your stop loss, you can have a greater risk reward. So if you have a larger stop loss, your risk reward isn't going to be as good as it could potentially be. So if you have the 50% marked up, you're able to even get better entries at that so say you don't even get in at the open like i do and you wait you're going to have less trades that are in your favor because you're trying to get a even smaller even better sniper entry but if you are able to capitalize on those sniper entries and they do play out the trades that you will be able to catch are going to be ridiculous you're going to be able to catch the one to five trades one to seven trades one to ten trades on a daily basis and mind you these order blocks are used on every time frame it's not just one time frame it's every time frame because this is just how the market moves when there's a lot of volume pushed into the market it creates these these candle patterns that are more than likely to be respected and more than likely to be traded to you can use them as targets you can use them as entries you can use them as multiple different things once you understand the reasoning behind them and why they do what they do so that is the importance of refining order blocks for any of you that don't know so if you want a better understanding of order blocks i have two videos that i made on them so make sure you watch those order block 1.0 order blocks 2.0 and this is going to be how to refine order blocks because i've noticed a lot of you guys are interested in order blocks and this is a concept that i use on a day-to-day -day basis so it only makes sense for me to teach you guys how i'm personally using them so if this video was helpful if you learned something make sure you like comment subscribe hit this button right here to subscribe button help me out and that's it make sure you also join my free telegram where i'm active every single day showing people how i trade and just actively helping people understand what i do and that's really it so if this video is helpful at all make sure you you like comment subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video